long ago in caves by trees and waterfalls they're weaving on the shore they call us to their circle reaching over time their voices crossing centuries their voices become mine we had a circle in my house where we uh, did all sorts of things that I found out witches do. <laughs> mm-hmm. We would sit around, we would sing, we would uh, give each other support. And I became a witch by doing the organizing for Starhawk. Mm-hmm. Okay. So do you practice that? Do I practice it? Well, uh, or is it, would you call it Wiccan? I mean, do you oh. identify as Wiccan? Or? Oh, I certainly do. Okay. I identify right. as a I'm witch. Not, I'm not sure. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. And that was another thing. See, my poor poor family had to adjust to lesbian, witch, <laughs> feminist. <laughs> they had a hard time. Right. Yes, my name is Benito Garcia Garcia, but I prefer to go by Benny, B-E-N-N-Y, and I was born in Sonora, Mexico. I am Latino of Mexican origin. I identify as gay. I also identify as gender nonconforming. I've been in Western North Carolina since I was seven years old. Franklin is what I call home, 16. Um, and I ended, up do- I ended up doing the confirmation. I ended up um, doing it to please my grandmother um, because she, she really believes in all that stuff. And my religion, my faith also was really affected because as a kid, I was, I was also very devout into my religion. And after those experiences, I, yeah, I really struggled a lot with what religion meant, especially if if God really made me this way, why would he make people in my life that are supposed to care for me reject me in that sense? So I really struggled with religion and, and I still do. Um, I've, I've come back a little bit towards the religious side, but not to a whole extent, not to the extent that I used to be at least. Um, I'll be honest, I really didn't start until last summer and it really started with the presidential um, candidacy and I saw Pete Buttigieg who's a married openly gay man who is very attached to his religion and it made me think that you know because I felt for such a long time that I either had to choose being gay and and having a partner someday and getting married and my religion because the way I was taught the way I was raised the way a lot of you know the Catholic teachings is you can't you can't have both it has to be either or and so a lot of the times I thought well Maybe having a partner to me is more important than having a religious, being accepted by a religious entity. And so I realized um, during that time that I can still have a relationship with God. I don't necessarily have to have a relationship with the church. Um, And so I think those two have to be distinguished, um, that the church is an entity and and God is a being. And I think, um, I believe the church has corrupted uh, God's word to fit their narrative. And so I have a relationship with my creator. I don't have a relationship with the church I was brought into. So I identify as a transgender woman. Um, I am like on the very cusp of transitioning. I I still identify as Christian. Um, If you want to get real technical, I identify as like a granny witch. Um, (laughs) Nice. That's that's been something that's kind of like central to my drag character is um, the fact that we're pushed so hard out of religious spaces yeah. that it there's this whole world of religious affiliation, Christian or not, people feel discouraged from because they have negative experiences as children and as young people or even as adults sometimes. Um, and I think that's something that's so tragic because my relationship with God has really helped me find solace mm-hmm. and solidarity and understanding and compassion, you know. And so my relationship with God is has been really helpful for me. And it was really difficult at first for me to distinguish between the hate that was coming from um, certain members of the community and God. 
and finally I realized, you know, I do have a loving relationship with God. Land, sweet Land. Okay. Um, I'm Anna Marie Smith, and my name is Giannina Cajajas Torres. Welcome. Um, so I'm native to Asheville. I've been living here my whole life. I am an immigrant. <laughs> I was born in Colombia, South America, in Bogota. And came here when I was five years old and was raised in New York City, Queens. I grew up Baptist. We went to church every Sunday. We didn't do the extreme attending of church related things like we weren't there on monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturdays no i only went on sundays and it was very important for us to show up to church as a family in so that dresses. in dresses so i i hated church <laughs> uh everybody had a different reality that's the crazy thing but on sunday we could show up in a similar reality but everybody i knew it was false like it wasn't this is not our norm, like, but we do it every set Sunday. And I remember the Sunday that my grandfather, instead of telling me to get up, it would every Sunday he'd say he'd open the door slightly, get up, or if I was living at my parents' house, you know, get up. You got how many, ever many minutes to get in the car. So for most of my life, it was like that. And then when I turned 16, I remember it was a question. Like, I remember the day vividly that he peeked in and said, are you coming? And I was like, it's an option. And I said, no, kind of like bashfully. And I'm like, and I still got to go. And he was like, all right, I'll see you when I come home. That was the first time I didn't go to church on a Sunday was when I was like 16 years old. And I haven't gone back since. And, let's and that, that way wasn't allowing me to discover who I am. It was telling me. It was deeming it already. And I was like, I didn't get to choose who I am. Like, <laughs> this is not fun. And I know people to this day, they still drive the same route to that church. I still see them, older people. And I'm like, dang, man. Like, I see that it's, for some people, it can sustain them. But for me, at an early age, I was like, this ain't, this can't be life. Like, it couldn't be. And I have family members that still go every, every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And me? No, and I respect them and they respect me. They do have a, a really interesting way. Not the Baptists. The Baptists are stuck in their way. <laughs> but in general, the general Christians, I like the Biltmore Baptist churches. I like the um, UU. I like UU. The UU church, uh, the Unitarian church. I, I sat in Quaker church one time, honestly, Rachel, and I was like, this is dope. I'm like, this Quaker thing, the silence. <laughs> This is how you worship. <laughs> Shh, quit telling other people what to do. And you just feel the spirit and then you go home. <laughs> I did. Yeah, so I, I like exploring different things, but uh, getting wrapped up in just any one of them, it didn't seem to like help learn anything. I was like, man, how can you learn? You're not comparing it to nothing. You're just judging everybody without learning. I was raised uh, Catholic. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I did. I... Did my baptism, my first communion, my confirmation, all that's missing is marriage, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't know if this one counts. <laughs> um, but honestly, since uh, what's cool is that I didn't grow up having to go to church, except for when I needed to fulfill one of the things I just mentioned, mm -hmm. like, right, or one of those you have to go to Sunday schools. And I was the, the one that very much questioned all of it. Um, I was definitely the student in the class that was like, I remember going into my first communion and the father was like, you're late. And I was like, I'm sorry, sir. And he was like, my name's father. I was like, you're not my father. I'm like, I'm not calling you father. I'm like what? No, <laughs> you haven't earned such title. Um, and I like, I just remember the entire thing. Honestly, I have a very bad experience with religion. Like religion to me brings hate religion is just uh, to me I'm like let, I'm like personally right like this isn't to come for anybody's uh being I just think it's like cult like you know and and it, it tells you to practice the very things that you know love the love one another and then you teach after love one another to hate your neighbor 
after you just told them to love each other. So I just think they're very contradictive, very patriarch, heterosexual. Uh, yeah. So, and then after learning the history of religion and Christianity and Catholicism, even more so the reason why I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Like, yet yeah, none of you mentioned the Years of Riches organization in the entire world. None of y'all ever mentioned that you have committed the most murders in the entire history of our nation. You know, and at, at, none of you have, have mentioned the reason why there wasn't, you know, gay marriages allowed in the United States is because of religion. You know, so until the or religion sits and tells me that they acknowledge these realities um, and that they don't have me praying to a white God, because how is God, you know, from or Jesus from Jerusalem and he's white? Like, I'm like, nope, that doesn't make any sense. Or from Egypt, or from Africa. I'm like, mm, uh, why are we praying to a blue eyed God? So to me, I'm like, it, it's just very uh, uh, manipulate, like manipulation. Yeah. Like, so for religion, I'm like, nope, not. <laughs> Like, I have a very, absolutely not um, with, with people. I think religion is, is the one that's practiced at home. And I think Anna and I practice a religion of, like, drinking coffee every day. <laughs> you know, or just being kind to one another. You know, I think that there's much more foundation when it's done at home. And when we, like, care to, like, love each other and understand our histories, then mm -hmm. when we go into these facilities that use a book that's been translated hundreds and thousands of times by men and think that's the word like that's it that's that this is the history you know I'm, I'm as someone who's bilingual I'm like I know what translation can what translate really messy <laughs> like the one sentence in Spanish you translate it for word for word and it changes the, its entire message in its entirety, so I'm like it doesn't make any sense why we think that this book that's been translated hundreds of times is the book that we should follow. I wish we could, I wish we could be more like the uh, Native American tribes, and for them, trans people were honored people. Uh, Hawaii, uh, yeah, the Hawaiian culture has always had trans people. Every culture except the Western. Um, you say you consider yourself a Christian. I was yes. just curious how religion plays into, you know, your experience as a trans person. Uh, a lot of guilt. Yeah. Because everything is, you know, uh, I, it's so odd, especially growing up in the South, mm -hmm. because you have this, you know, they use what they call the clobber passages in the Bible. Right. You know, that uh, men shall not wear that which pertaineth to a woman and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the same group that is preaching on that will turn around, used to turn around and have a womanless wedding mm -hmm. at their church. Yeah. Which used to be a big deal here in the South. Mm -hmm. And I used to see those in the newspaper, see the pictures and see them listening. just like, wow, I wish we had something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just find it just, just an interesting dichotomy. But I'm just not a church person. But I have a very strong faith. And my faith gets me through a lot of times. And I used to pray to take this away from me. And then it's almost like there was just a little quiet voice that says, gave you this for a reason. It's my reason, not yours. So, you know, just go along with me for a while. <laughs> and I, I honestly feel that. Uh, but I do have a very strong faith, but I'm not, I look at around at some of the extremist religion, both left and right, and I'm just like, that's not me. I don't want to, I don't want to be involved with that. Don't know if that answers that, but... No, yeah, absolutely.